All right, it's a great day. It's going to be a, a phenomenal day for Putnam County Middle Schools. Can't take a look, pan around. What do you got? We're going to have what do we say, Candace? Six or seven hundred kids piled into this gymnasium this morning. We're going to talk about five principles on how to be successful. We're going to jack them up this morning. We're going to show them and teach them exactly what it takes. It's going to be a great day. So if you want to catch the video, all you got to do is tune in. Alright, but either way, I don't want to waste your time. And I have valuable time. 
time. And they paid me a lot of money to be here. You know how much money they paid me? Alright. They paid me, they paid me nothing to be here. And the reason why, and even if they offered, I wouldn't accept it. This is something for you guys. I have personally put together this talk for you guys. I've personally taken the time over the last week to pray for you and your family. I don't even know you, but I, I know one thing, that what you're going through right now, what you're going to go through in life is going to be tough. And so you have a choice to make. Life is either tough or you can suffer. And you might as well choose tough. So I want to teach you some things today to teach you how to be tough and get through these circumstances. We're going to go through five things. And as it relates to time, I want to make sure you realize time is the most precious commodity you have. Most of you spend time watching TV, sleeping, or on Facebook, but that's not time that, that you need to help yourself become successful. All right, so make sure you value that time. It's very, very important, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, on this side of the room, I need somebody just to stand up as a volunteer. Anybody? Okay, I got one right here. I need you to come around. Come on around, however you can get to me. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a listening test, a listening test. Okay, the reason why we're gonna do a listening test is because we want to make sure that over the next 20 minutes that I'm talking to you, you guys are listening to what I have to say. But what unfortunately what happens is you're either in reactive listening or responsive listening. There's two different types of listening. Reactive listening is as I'm talking, you're thinking about something you want to say right now. Okay, responsive listening is actually being in the moment and paying attention to that. So, we're going to test you to see if you're listening and being in the moment, okay? What's your name? Bud Dostry. Okay, one more time. Bud Dostry. All right, Bud Dostry. Okay, Bud's going to give us a chance. Give him a hand. All right, Bud, what's going to do? The word, I'm going to ask you to spell a word. And then I'm going to tell you to repeat the word. I'm going to ask you to spell the word, repeat it, spell the word, repeat it. And then I'm going to ask you a question, and then you're going to answer, okay? And it's going to determine if you're listening or not, okay? All right, easy enough. The word is silk. silk. What's the word? Silk. Okay, the word is what? Silk. Okay, spell the word. Silk. Okay, the word is silk. Spell the word. Silk. Okay, what's the word? Silk. I need you to speak a little louder, okay? One more time. What's the word? Silk. Okay, spell the word. S-I-L-K. Alright, one more time. What's the word? Silk. What a cow spring. Milk. Okay. Now listen. Now here's a great example of reactive listening, because cows don't drink milk, they drink water. But they give milk. Okay? So that just shows how easy you're not listening. But here's what I want to do for Bud. Alright, for for giving the game, I'm gonna give you five bucks. So give Bud a hand. In life, you have many opportunities to volunteer and get in the game, okay? But what happens is, when someone asks you to get in the game and volunteer, you start to wonder, what are the people going to think? And I feel silly, and I feel stupid, and maybe I don't want to do it. So you sit in your chair, and you don't volunteer, okay? So one thing to remember is, when you volunteer and you get in the game, you get paid, okay? You get paid when you get in the game. So I want to help you guys understand that you have a chance to get in the game. All right, now, real quick before we, we get started, very, very important that you understand, there's a nice book, nice book that I love that says, commit yourself to instruction and tune your ears to hear the words of knowledge. All right, so this is an opportunity, I know you hear that, and you think, okay, what's he talking about, okay? All right, commit yourself, commit yourself. Instruction, okay, very, very important, commit yourself. When you commit yourself to something, okay, and you really want something bad, you need to want it as bad as you want to breathe. When you get there, you're really committed, okay? Instruction is obviously listening to, to somebody who has the instruction. Same thing with the knowledge. So I bring you an opportunity because I've lived a few more years than you guys, so I've lived some time to give you some experience, some experience that you have no idea about myself that I want to share with you this morning. I want to make sure that you understand that you have that same opportunity to succeed like I did. How many of you here know who I am? How many of you here? 
right now, okay, what you think today will shape your tomorrow. All right, you have to understand that. A lot of people think that seeing is believing. Have you guys ever heard that said before? A lot of people say, well, show me and then I'll believe it. But let me tell you a thing about belief. Belief is the, act, the exact opposite. Believing is seeing. When you believe something so bad, it ends up showing up in your life. It's not the other way around. So belief is principle number one. All right, principle number two is goals. Now, when you think about goals, I know a lot of you in here may have short-term goals. You're just thinking about tomorrow. But let me explain something to you. If you want to make a lot of money in life, okay, or you want to be extremely successful in life as it relates to your job and things you guys see on TV and so on and so forth, you have to be a goal-setting person. You have to be a goal-setting person. You're not going to achieve what you want without setting goals. And setting goals is not keeping them in your head as a wish. You have to take your goals and put them on paper. Okay? Very, very important that you have to have a goal. Having a goal gives purpose to activity. Let me share something with you personal. Can I get personal with you guys? I think I know you already. Can I get personal? So how does that relate to goals? Why would I share that with you? When your why gets so big, the how will show up. Here's what I mean by that. Right now, each and every one of you have situations in your current environment that you think hold you back. You can make an excuse and say, my mom or my dad or my teacher or my coach. You can make that excuse if you want, okay? But that's not the real deal. When your why gets so big, the how will show up. My why was, as I grew up, and I was 13, 14, 15, my why is I wanted to get out of the house. That was my why. I had to leave. I wanted it so bad, it was worse than I wanted to breathe. Every day, when I would go to bed, I'd cry myself to sleep when I hear mom and dad fight, and I hear the doors, I hear yelling and screaming. Right? So every day, that why got bigger and bigger. So you have to think about what is your why as it relates to goals. I want you to think for a minute. Every one of you, as you sit there, you have something inside of you that you know that nobody else knows that you go through. You have to determine what that why is. And when that why is so big, the how will always, always show up. So principle number two is goals. Okay, so the first one was what? Belief, right? Second one is goals. All right, the third one is being outcome focused. Now, what does that mean? Let me tell you what that means. Outcome focused. In life, once you believe something, then you start to set goals. Then once you set the goal, then you start to get off the goal and do other things that don't pertain to the goal. This is very, very important. You can remember this. This will help you make a lot of money one day. This will help you in your marriage one day. This will help you as a father or mother one day. If you're outcome-focused, okay, the outcome-focused person stays the course regardless of the circumstance. After you write your goals down and after you determine what you want, what's going to show up is a bunch of negative circumstance. And if you're not outcome focused on your goals, you will not attain the goals. You have to remain focused on the outcome. That's why when I first started, I said, I am, okay, I am personally responsible. No one's responsible for your life. I want you to say, I am. Responsible for my life. Who's responsible for your life? Not me. Not me. I am. Alright, as soon as you understand that, as soon as you understand that you are responsible for your life, not your mama, not your daddy, not your teachers, not your church pastor, you are responsible. When you start to understand that, you'll realize that you'll take personal responsibility. Alright, the circumstances will always show up. Okay, very, very important. So let's talk about real quick, as we go to the next principle, if you have goals, what do you need to do? You need to write them down. If you have a goal in your mind, it's called a wish. It's called a hope. It's called a prayer. As soon as you transfer that, that goal from your mind to your paper, it now becomes a reality. So if you have a goal, and you don't write them down, who's responsible for that? 
I am. I can't hear you guys. Say, I am. I thought I was gonna pass out more money. Y'all don't seem as involved as you do. Okay. Alright, here we go. We're Alright, look, we're almost done. Alright, let's pay attention. Here we go. Principle number four. Principle number four. And it's all kind of wrapped in the same thing. Anticipation, expectation, and preparation. That's a big word. Here, write down preparation. That's, that's the main thing. Preparation. Principle number four is preparation. <laughs> Listen to me. Some of you guys in the room have to get a high expectation of yourself. You believe what other people say about you so much. It's hindered your growth. And I want you to understand something. If some of you guys had friends that talk to you the way you talk to yourself, you probably wouldn't keep as a friend very long. You gotta focus on what you say to yourself. A lot of people say that it's crazy to have self-talk, but we're always talking to ourselves, right? All day long, you're talking to yourself right now. All right, so, and self-talk is okay, but you gotta make sure you're focused on what you're telling yourself. All right, ha having the, the expectation of something great, you gotta expect it. A lot of your athletes in the room, you gotta expect to win a championship. That's an expectation. You gotta expect to be a champion in your life as it relates to you graduating middle school, getting into high school, moving on to college. That's an expectation that you should have. And, and the only way you're gonna do that is principle number four is preparation. All right? The way you practice is the way you play. Right now, how you practice every day is gonna determine how you play when you're in high school. You're building the blocks, the foundation. You're building the blueprint of success. If you don't learn what you gotta learn now when you get into high school, okay, you're gonna be lost. Some of you had the opportunity in eighth grade to pick up a credit for, for ninth grade. Is that true? So that's a great opportunity, but some of you are dropping the ball. Some of you are dropping the ball in that. So you gotta make sure that you're looking at that expectation, okay? And make sure you're personally developing yourself. That's a, that's a huge thing. I would tell you one of the things, when I was a car dealer, I did not own the business. But there was a class that I could take that cost $15,000 that I would have to come up with the money to pay for, okay? And I could choose to take it when I was actually a dealer, or I could have done it before I was a dealer. But I had a high expectation of where I was going. I saw myself as a car dealer one day, and I paid for that class before I was ever even a general manager of a, of, of a dealership. That's having a high level of expectation. You guys have the same opportunity. There are things right now that you can do that's preparing your future, okay? And only you take responsibility. That's why I want you to know I am personally responsible for such a huge thing. We're gonna go to the, the, the very last one. I hope you guys have written this down. It's principle number five. Learn to be a game changer. Okay? Game changers, when the volunteer is asked, game changers get the game. People that are not game changers, they spectate, they watch, they're critical, they judge other people. They have everything to say, but they don't want to get involved themselves. Don't do that. You need to learn to be a game changer. Somebody that gets in a game. It only takes one person to change a game. That's it. Even at the Putnam Middle School right now, even as I speak to the teachers, it only takes one teacher to change the game. One teacher. It takes one person to change the game. You look at LeBron James, he left the Cleveland Cavaliers. Cleveland Cavaliers were no good. It takes one person to change the game when that person decides to do it. But the key is you've got to make the choice. Okay, and choice is the only thing that God gave you complete control over. You can't control anything else in your life except for your choice. You can make the choice to do what you want to do. And it's extremely important, as we look at these principles, all right, that you learn to be a game changer. Has anybody ever told you that you can't do something? Yeah. All right, so you have a choice, right? You, you can choose to believe that, and you can say, yeah, yeah, you're probably right, I, I can't do that. Or you can say, no, I think I can do that. When I was coming up in the car dealership, I was always a younger guy, and, and I told everybody that I wanted to buy a car dealership. And everybody said, nah, you're too young. You're too young, you're too young, you'll never do it. You'll never do it. 
Okay, but if I listen to what everybody told me, even, even family members told me I couldn't. They said, Louie, be realistic. How are you going to buy a car dealership? Can you believe, would you believe that your family would actually discourage you and tell you you can't? Has that ever happened to you? Wow. Let me tell you something. You are personally responsible for your own success and your own failure. You cannot blame that on no one. It's very important that you understand that. It's no one else's responsibility. Very important to remember that success in life is not something you shoot for. Success in life is something you attract. What I'm giving you this morning are five things to be a more attractive person. And I'm not talking about beauty. I'm talking about being an attractive person. Somebody that somebody wants to be around. Somebody that's positive. Somebody that's ambitious. Somebody that sets goals. Somebody that believes in themselves. Somebody that's a game changer. Okay, so very, very important that you understand what success is. And let me end with this last story, very, very important. And I've told the story before. Has anybody ever heard the story of the, of the Chinese bamboo tree? No? All right. It's TJ. But anyways, the Chinese bamboo tree. Listen to this story real quick. The Chinese bamboo tree is a small nut and has to be planted in the ground and it has to be fertilized and watered for five years straight every single day. And National Geographic says if it ever stops, if anybody ever misses one day, the plant dies, the tree dies. You can't miss one day, not one day. Every day, every day you have to water and fertilize this plant. Now, after five years of fertilizing this plant, okay, it takes six weeks to grow 90 feet. After five years, it takes six weeks to grow 90 feet. So my question is, did it take six weeks or five years to plant that? Right? The obvious answer is it took five years. Look, but here's the point. Listen to my point, guys. It may not happen to you today, tomorrow, your junior year, your first year of college, but you have to plant every day. You can't miss a day. Every single day you've got to believe. You've got to be a game changer. Every single day you've got to set goals, read them, understand them. Every day. And when you do that, when you make the choice to do that, it's not your mama's choice. That's not your daddy's choice. Only you can choose to do that. When you make that choice, something special happens if we grow 90 feet in six weeks. So as we close, I need a volunteer to stand on this side. Success. What's the word? 